Hello, I'm Don Mitchell. Welcome back to Business Basics. Uh, we continue today to look at the last part of Business Basics in which we explore ways to reduce investments. Um, in this case, we'll also be looking at ways to reduce costs as well as investments. So I'm sure this is kind of like a bonus uh, lesson. So today's topic is Ad Grants and Subsidies, Lesson 46. As always, let me begin by quoting from the Bible. In this case, the book of Esther, chapter 2, verse 18, in the New King James Version. Then the king made a great feast, the feast of Esther, for all his officials and servants. And he proclaimed a holiday in the provinces, and he gave gifts, according to the generosity of a king. The cost of investments that benefit many stakeholders can unfairly fall on more than one organization. Amtrak, the American government-owned passenger rail corporation, Corporation is an example of this problem. Amtrak was formed at a time when for-profit passenger rail operations were losing a great deal of money, as were the railroads that owned such operations. For, in, their, for their financial survival, U.S. railroads petitioned the federal government for legislative relief so they would no longer be required to transport passengers. Since citizens still needed rail service, Amtrak was chosen by Congress to serve that purpose. For most of its history, Amtrak leased access to railroads tracks. Eventually, it was able to obtain its own tracks from Washington, D.C. to Boston, and the funding needed to upgrade its track so that higher speed trains could operate on it. The higher speed service soon became profitable and continues to be so today. Overall, however, Amtrak still loses a great deal of money, which U.S. taxpayers subsidize. As a result, the Passenger Rail Corporation has a hard time making a new capital investments for upgrading the track it owns, for improving the stations it uses for passengers, and for adding rolling stock. In 2009, Vice President Biden, who, while in Congress, daily rode Amtrak's high-speed service to and from Wilmington, Delaware, and Washington, D.C., helped Amtrak to gain $1.3 billion in investment funds to improve its services. Normally, such a story might describe a political favor for a failing organization that gains support unfairly. Closer examination reveals, however, this investment is an opportunity to reduce investment intensity for all U.S. citizens. Amtrak isn't the only form of passenger travel that's heavily subsidized in the United States. Airlines are subsidized through airport building and providing of air traffic control. Roads are heavily subsidized to keep high-speed internet highways in good shape. Even cruise ships for vacations are subsidized through safety-related services. Railroads provide a major opportunity to add travel capacity without taking a great deal more of highly desired and expensive urban land. You could lay 10 rail lines side by side in the space that a new freeway occupies. To expand an airport usually means carving out major sections of the most densely occupied land in or near any urban center. Most rail lines, by contrast, are often lightly used and could easily handle much more traffic if the requisite track maintenance upgrades were done. As an example of what I mean about alternative solutions being investment intensive, part of the Boston area's major roads were rebuilt over 20 years at an estimated cost of $22 billion. That's four times what was needed at the same time to add or to improve for higher speed railroad tracks over all the most congested parts of the United States. There are some statistics about subsidies. The average Amtrak passenger is currently subsidized to the extent of $40 per trip. Most of them pay for legally mandated services where usage is light. By comparison, travel on the average American passenger vehicle is subsidized through road building to the tune of $600 to $700 a year. I rode Amtrak from Seattle, Washington to Portland, Oregon in 2009. I was delighted to find the fare cost 80% less than flying and 90% less than renting a car. The service was terrific, the seats were new and comfortable. The trip was quick and the scenery was outstanding, and I couldn't imagine why anyone would want to travel between these two cities in any other way. Clearly, in places where it would be hard or ridiculously expensive to add capacity for airplanes and vehicles, it makes a great deal of sense to expand higher speed passenger rail capacity and services. Alternative ways to travel would probably require 50 to 100 times greater investments. Naturally, if your business as heavily subsidized competitors, you need to be prepared to obtain your own subsidies in order to compete. If you don't have subsidized competitors, it may still make good sense to seek grants and subsidies when the alternatives for all stakeholders to incur much higher investments and costs. 
Let's consider the idea of a service that would provide comprehensive databases for tracking and delivering services to all the poor people in the United States. As many poor people don't know what services are available to them, they often don't receive needed services that they qualify, and often instead consume more expensive services than they need. For instance, most poor people who qualify for subsidized or free food, housing, and job training, most will only be getting one or two of these benefits because they're ignorant of how to obtain the others. Some poor people don't know that most state governments will provide them with no or low-cost health insurance so they can receive many of the same medical services as everyone else. Lacking health insurance, these people often go to a hospital's emergency room for care because they know from experience that hospitals rarely turn them away. Though through subsidies to cover the cost of such, quote, free, end quote, services, governments may pay $600 to $1,000 for a medical visit rather than the $60 to $300 that would have been incurred for treatment in a physician's office. By using all the comprehensive services well the governments provide, most poor people get a job and take care of themselves within two or three years. Otherwise, they may need government help for decades. By having a comprehensive database for poor people who are receiving government services, social worker can be sure that someone is receiving all the needed benefits he or she is eligible for. In addition, service providers uh, can tell if a person has access to other forms of services that are less expensive. As a result, a hospital emergency room could forward a prospective patient to a nearby clinic where a non-emergency medical condition or illness could be better treated and often more quickly, focusing more of the emergency room's uh, scarce resources on critical care. It's unlikely that such a database would be built and maintained without a government subsidy. That's because although many other stakeholders would benefit from such a database, none of the stakeholders has a nice financial incentive to develop and to maintain it. In seeking grants and subsidies, it's natural, it actually helps to point out how other investments and costs are reduced as a result so that total stakeholder benefits are substantially increased well beyond the investment costs. In a for-profit business environment, it's not unusual to think in terms of how some stakeholders might receive benefits that are so substantial for reducing investments and costs that these stakeholders might be willing to provide grants and subsidies to encourage the use of the for-profit enterprises offerings. Such opportunities are probably more common than you think. Here's an example. Imagine that you provide new software that enables certain types of equipment to perform with fewer breakdowns. Let's further assume that such breakdowns often cause serious injuries. If the country where you sell the software normally incurs major ongoing costs for injuries, this government may be interested in paying for software improvements that further reduce injuries or to subsidize equipment owners' purchases of the existing software. I know that funding sources available, governments may pay for the development of technologies to reduce investments and costs for their citizens. Such grants and subsidies can be essential to making improvements available. In examining business opportunities, you should consider where new developments, offerings, expansions, and other investment-intensive activities would yield major benefits for all stakeholders, as well as for citizens at large. When everyone benefits, you should look into applying for grants and subsidies. Whether or not the government agrees, you also consider foundations and other private sources. What's the key point about seeking grants and subsidies? Redesign your company's business models, methods of operating, use of facilities, ownership of facilities, breadth their product line, and offerings to develop alternatives that reduce investment and costs for all stakeholders. And seek grants and subsidies from beneficiaries to help reduce investments by 96% and create a great deal of excess cash for everyone. So what are your assignments? Well, first, identify the five most significant activities you could provide that would reduce investments and costs required by all stakeholders. Second, measure what the benefits of each activity would be for each type of stakeholder. Three, evaluate if it would be uneconomic to provide any of these benefits without grants and subsidies. Four, where you need grants and subsidies to make the investment, determine the most likely sources. Five, and then investigate how your business models, operating methods, use of facilities, ownership of facilities, breadth their product line, and offerings could be shifted to become even more effective by making it easier for stakeholders and your organization to reduce their investments and costs to obtaining grants and subsidies. So I hope this uh, lesson was a blessing to you and be one that you can apply soon. I look forward to speaking with you again soon as we look into more ways to reduce investments for your organization and all stakeholders. In the meantime, may God bless you, your family, and all you do in the name of Jesus. Goodbye for now. Take care.